In this video, we're going to talk about calorimetry and heat capacity and get into some calculations with specific heat. So if you measure the heat of a reaction or a process, oftentimes in the lab we're doing this by measuring the temperature. So if you think about an exothermic reaction, if you're measuring the temperature of that reaction as it's happening, an exothermic reaction releases heat, so you would expect that the temperature should increase. So if the temperature increases for an exothermic reaction, that must mean that the temperature decreases for an endothermic reaction. So when we're doing a reaction, and we start to apply this to figure out the specific heat of a substance or to figure out the amount of heat change in a reaction, you will have to assign the signs. So you will have to know whether something should be endothermic or exothermic. And sometimes your only clue when a problem is going to be whether the temperature goes up, and up or down. So in an exothermic reaction, we're going to increase temperature in an endothermic reaction, the temperature decreases. Heat capacity is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of an object by one degree Celsius. So we can put that into equation form as the heat capacity, which is represent, represented as C, is equal to the amount of heat, which is represented as Q, divided by the change in temperature, which is delta T. And delta T, if we're defining heat capacity, is going to be 1 degree Celsius. More well, commonly, what we use is the specific heat of a substance. The specific heat of a substance required, refers to the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So we can represent that as Q is equal to the specific heat times the mass of a substance times the change in temperature. Or, a shorter way to write it, Q is equal to MC delta T, where M is the mass, C is the specific heat, and delta T is the change in temperature. So delta T is calculated as the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Sometimes we can also we also express the heat capacity in terms of molar heat capacity. So the molar heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of a substance by one degree Celsius. So the only difference here is that instead of one gram, we look at one mole. So we can write the same equation. Q is equal to the molar heat capacity times the number of moles of a substance times the change in temperature. And again, change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So let's look at a couple of examples here. The first part of this question asks us, what is the specific heat of silicon if it takes 192 joules to raise the temperature of 45 grams of silicon by 6 degrees Celsius? So we're going to take our equation, Q equals MC delta T, and we're given the heat, the mass, and the change in temperature, 
and we want to calculate the specific heat. So I can plug in 192 joules is equal to 45 grams times the specific heat times 6 degrees Celsius. And then we divide both sides by 45 grams and by 6 degrees Celsius so that we get C by itself. So C is equal to 192 joules divided by 45 grams times 6 degrees Celsius. So if you divide that out, you come out with 0 0.71. And the question is, what are the units here? Well, none of our units cancel out, so we're left with all of them which is joules of a gram degree Celsius. And those are actually the units for specific heat. Specific heat is measured in joules per gram times degree Celsius. So our final answer here is that the specific heat of silicon is 0.71 joules per gram degree Celsius. The second part of this question asks us, what is the molar heat capacity? if it takes 192 joules to raise the temperature of 45 grams of silicon by 6 degrees Celsius. So there's two ways we could work out this problem. We could convert the 45 grams to moles and plug that into our second equation from this slide. So we could plug it into this equation down here. Or, since we already have joules per gram degree Celsius, we could simply convert the grams to moles. So if we take 0 0.71, and let me move this up a little bit so that I have enough space here. So if you look up the molar mass of silicon on your periodic table, you'll find the molar mass of silicon is 28.09 grams per mole. So 28.09 grams per one mole. And Gram, grams cancels with grams, so we're left with joules per mole times degree Celsius. So if you multiply 0 0.71 times 28.09, you come out with 20 joules per mole degree Celsius. So let's try another example here. We want to calculate the amount of energy required to convert 237 grams of water at 0 degrees Celsius to hot water at 80 degrees Celsius. And we're given the specific heat of water here. So we have our equation. Q is equal to MC delta T. So we have a mass of 237 grams. And we're given the specific heat. And then our final temperature 
is 80 degrees Celsius. And our initial temperature was 0 degrees Celsius. So 80 minus 0 is just going to be 80. So we can ignore the minus 0 there. And if we look at our units here, grams cancels with grams, degrees Celsius cancels with degrees Celsius. So 237 times 4.184 times 80 degrees gives us a heat of 79,000 joules or if we wanted to put this in kilojoules we could divide that by a thousand and we would have 79 kilojoules so you're not specifically asked for kilojoules here but since that is such a large number it's really a little bit easier to express it in kilojoules so either answer here would be acceptable since you're not specifically told what units to express heat in. So you could give either joules or kilojoules. So here's a table of different heat capacities for different substances. There's also a table somewhere in your book. Usually it's in the appendix. And you can look up heat capacities for different substances. So if you're working on a problem and it's asking you for the heat or the mass or the change in temperature, but you're not given a specific heat, you can look up the substance on a table of heat capacities. So we can use this idea of energy transfer being equal and opposite and the, idea and the calculations for specific heat. To, in order to do calorimetry. So calorimetry is the measurement of the quantity of heat that's transferred during a physical or chemical process. So we can measure how much heat is gained by our calorimeter and we know that much heat must have been lost by the system or we can measure how much heat is lost by our calorimeter and that much heat must have been gained by the system. And we can use this process to figure out how many calories or how many joules of heat are transferred during a specific process. So let's take a look at an example here. We have 23.5 grams of aluminum bees that are heated to 100 degrees Celsius in boiling water. So the final temperature of these beads after they reached equilibrium is 100 degrees Celsius. Then we take those aluminum beads and we place them in a calorimeter that has 130 grams of water at 23 degrees Celsius. And we allow the heat transfer to occur until both the aluminum beads and the water are at thermal equilibrium at 26 degrees Celsius. So we want to know what the molar heat capacity of aluminum is. So we can do this by setting up an equation that shows that the heat lost by the aluminum beads is equal to the heat gained by the water. So we know that any heat given up by the aluminum beads is going to be gained by the water. 
And we also know that Q is equal to MC delta T. So anywhere in this equation that I see Q, I can replace that with MC delta T. So I can write the mass of the aluminum beads times the specific heat of the aluminum beads times the change in temperature for the aluminum beads is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change in temperature of the water. And if I plug in the mass of my aluminum beads is negative 23.5 grams. I don't know what the specific heat of the aluminum beads is. And the aluminum beads start out at 100 degrees Celsius and end up at 26 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm going to have to try to squeeze this over a little bit so that I can fit this all onto my screen here. So I have negative 23.5 grams times the specific heat of aluminum times 26 degrees Celsius minus 100 degrees Celsius. And I had 130 grams of water. And the specific heat of water isn't given here, but we were given that in an earlier problem. And I'll go ahead and tell you it's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the water ends up at 26 degrees Celsius. And it started at 23 degrees Celsius. So then we can divide both sides by negative 23.5 grams and by 26.0 minus 100. So that we get the specific heat of aluminum by itself. So that cancels out and the specific heat of aluminum is equal to all of this up here. So if we take 130.0 times 4.184 times 26 minus 23 and divide that by negative 23.5 times 26 minus 100, you should come up with a specific heat of 0.938 joules per gram degree Celsius. So that gets us a specific hint, but the question actually asks us for the molar heat capacity. So we're not quite done because we need to convert this to moles. So if we take the molar mass of aluminum, which if you look on your periodic table, the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. So grams cancels with grams. And if you take 0.938 times 26.98, you get 25.3 joules per mole degree Celsius. Okay, so we're going to stop here and we will get into 
some more examples related to thermochemistry in the next couple of videos. And we will get some more practice with this in class. So I will see you in class.